let's take a look at the how sales have actually performed. So far this year, there have been 44 properties sold, and this is the data for just sales over $10 million in the city. But annualizing what's happened so far, we're down about 35% from last year and down 66% two-thirds below where we were at the peak of the cycle. If we look at dollar volume, also down 35% on a year-over-year -year basis if we annualize, and down 68% from the peak. So the volume so far this year has been really anemic. We've, we've been feeling it. It's across the board. It's in all property types. If we look at land, land is on pace to only be $1.9 billion this year in the Manhattan market. And that's a market that usually is very, very robust. If you look at where that 1.9 compares to, that's slightly better than we were in 2010, where we were just coming out of a very, very significant recession. So land market is hurting. We look at multifamily, and we could talk for the whole afternoon about multifamily and where that's going. There's been a surprising amount of activity. Annualizing the first quarter, we're at about 3.5 billion. I maintain most of the sales that have occurred in the first quarter closed in January. Those contracts were probably signed in September of October before the real impact hearing the different proposals that the politicians were making about how rent regulation was going to be reformed. And that has really caused tremendous inertia in the multifamily market. The multifamily market is the one sector that has really been uh, the most heavily impacted um, of what we're seeing so far. And it, the rent regulation renewal is a huge reason why that's the case. And if we look at Class A office, values are down, but there have only been two sales of Class A office buildings in the first quarter of 2019 in, in Manhattan. So the volume is just not there. If we look at the outer boroughs, the outer boroughs are doing better relative to Manhattan. We see, and this, this is part of something we're gonna talk about, is the, the attitude of New York's of Manhattan investors that are looking at other areas to deploy capital. And that is maybe one of the most troubling trends that we've seen for the past two years or so. Um, but you look at the outer boroughs, year over year only down 11% and 29% from the peak. Dollar volume basically flat, only down about 2% from where we were last year. So the boroughs are holding up relatively well uh, compared to how the Manhattan market is. But to try to figure out, so I'm sitting there thinking, all right, well, the economy is booming. We have great GDP growth, and I call it great victory, even though it's, you know, typically if you had 2% GDP growth, you'd feel like a recession. You were in a recession, even if you technically weren't in a recession. Um, but GDP growth is good. Job creation is good. We now have wage growth that we haven't had in a decade. All of these things are very, very positive for the underlying fundamentals. So why is the market behaving as it is? So I said, I'm gonna go back to 1981, my freshman year at Penn, and talk, go to my Economics 101 class and talk about supply and demand, because that relationship really impacts so much of what happens in the market. So we look at low supply, low demand, you get low prices and low volume. High supply, low demand, very low prices, very low volume. Low supply, high demand, very high prices with low volume, and high supply and high demand, high prices and high volume. So how the market typically is, historically, demand has always exceeded su supply. In the Manhattan market south of 96th Street, on average, going back to 1984, the turnover of, of properties has been about 2.6% of the total stock, which means that only one out of every 20 properties um, one out of every 40 properties sells in any particular year. So if you look at supply as being historically very, very low and demand being very high, that has what has made the peak of every successive cycle so much higher than the previous peak. Now, what we're seeing with respect to today's circumstances are that we have higher than average supply um, and we have lower than average demand, so we have downward pressure being exerted on prices and volume is, is down. 